It was their third day in Josh's late mother Agatha's country house, and Rebecca couldn't believe Josh had brought them here. The creepy talismans, feathers, animal bones, and crystal balls scattered around unsettled her. The old Ouija boards, spell books, strange figurines, and half-burnt candles from Josh's mother, a fortune teller, only deepened her discomfort. This isn't the place I imagined, Rebecca said, her voice tinged with frustration. Josh, slicing his chicken and dipping it in mayonnaise, looked at her. I know you don't like it. Maybe we could remodel by fall, invite some relatives. Remodel by fall? Josh, you promised we'd sell this house once we found a buyer. You never mentioned living here forever. I want to go back to Miami. Josh sighed, visibly frustrated and exhausted. I thought you'd love this place. It's our ancestral home. I was raised here. She gestured for silence, hearing what seemed like a creaking noise from the basement, like something being dragged. It's probably just the rats, Josh said dismissively. It's mom's old stuff. I told you moving here was a mistake, Rebecca scowled. Rebecca, mom wouldn't have wanted me to sell a house. After being here, I think it can be our home. And you know why we're here. Rebecca's eyes filled with tears. It's not just about you, Josh. I want to leave, and that's final. Joe's own tears started to form. I miss Emily too. I know this isn't easy, but you need to accept that Emily is gone. Please stop doing this to yourself and to me. Josh seized the moment to present a pamphlet. Becky, I was thinking, what do you think? Rebecca's eyes fell on the pamphlet titled Choosing Love. Your path to adoption. The image of a couple with a happy child unsettled her. Adoption? Rebecca asked her voice filled with disbelief. I don't think I can do this. I haven't moved on from Emily yet. This feels rushed. I understand, Josh said gently. But maybe adopting a child could help us heal. It's a way to feel like Emily's memory lives on. Rebecca's tears flowed freely. We need to figure out how to move on, but not like this. Josh took a deep breath. Family isn't just about blood or genetics. It's about love. Please take your time. As they began to eat, a loud knock on the door startled them. Rebecca checked the clock. It was half past nine. Who could that be? Rebecca asked, her voice low. It might be the neighbors Josh said, but then realized their nearest neighbors were far away. Hi, can I help you? Rebecca asked stunned. Hi, does Josh live here? The girl asked her confident grin contrasting with her frail appearance. Yes, Rebecca replied, suspicion growing. Who are you? Do you live nearby? How do you know my husband? Where are your parents? My name is Winnie, the girl said and I think I'm Josh's daughter. Rebecca's eyes widened. She turned to Josh, who was equally frozen in his chair. Josh, can you come here? We seem to have a small problem. Rebecca said, her voice trembling. Josh approached, kneeling in front of the girl. Hey, sweetie, what's your name? Winnie. How old are you, Winnie? She asked. 10, Winnie replied confidently. Rebecca glared at Josh who looked pale. Is she your daughter? She demanded. Josh hesitated. She could be. I had a serious relationship with Alice. Maybe it's an accidental pregnancy. Rebecca was furious. Why didn't you tell me about Alice? Josh defended himself. I told you about her. She used me for money. Now do you believe me? She's been lying. I don't know what else she's been lying to us about. For God's sake, Becky. Not in the morning, Josh sighed. She's just a kid. So what if she ate all this? We have plenty of food. I'm late to meet a friend. I need to get ready. But Josh, what are these canned fish containers doing here? We haven't eaten canned fish lately. The day passed with Winnie watching TV under Rebecca's close supervision. Rebecca hoped nothing was wrong. Later that night, while everyone slept, Rebecca was jolted awake. Josh, the dog is barking so loudly. I think something's wrong. 
Josh groggily got up and put on his robe. They rushed downstairs, following Cookie's loud barking. Must be a rat, Josh said. What's down there? Rebecca whispered, watching Winnie from the staircase. Hey, sweetie, go back to sleep, Josh said to Winnie. It's nothing. I think Cookie just saw a rat. Rebecca noticed Winnie's concern and decided something was wrong. Once back in their room, Rebecca nudged Josh. Josh, check the basement. Now? I bet mom stored her creepy stuff down there. I'm not going. Josh, Cookie's a big dog. He wouldn't be scared by a rat. We should check. Rebecca's concern grew. Moments later, she heard a strange crying sound. Josh, did you hear that? Josh had heard it too and started panicking. He grabbed a flashlight and peered through the window. What is it? Rebecca asked. I don't see any kids. Trick or treating is next week, Josh whispered. The eerie wailing continued. They heard footsteps and a woman's weeping. Becky, stay close. I'll get the girl. We might have an intruder, Josh whispered. They left their room and were about to check on Winnie when Josh froze. Wait, what is she doing down there? He whispered as Winnie approached the basement door with a bowl of food. We need to follow her, Josh said. Winnie disappeared into the basement and closed the door. Josh and Rebecca crept to the basement door. Becky, keep watch. It might be dusty. I'll check what she's up to. Be careful. Rebecca whispered as Josh cautiously opened the basement door and climbed down the ladder. Oh my God, that's my ring and bracelet. How did you get them? Rebecca gasped. I gave it to them, a voice startled them. They turned to see Winnie. Winnie, they gasped. Can you explain this? Who are these girls? What are they doing here? She's right. 13-year-old Harper, the oldest, stepped forward and revealed a shocking truth. It started last year when we were coming home from the store. A year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and John, both are boring. Harper rolled her eyes and peered inside Miss Moonshadow's property. Miss Moonshadow, known as Agatha, was a famous fortune teller. Some dreaded her predictions, others sought them obsessively. Harper, he's our stepdad. You can't be so mean to him, Winnie said. Harper, I heard she's a witch. People say she practices black magic. Let's go home. It's not safe, Winnie said nervously. Harper laughed. She's not a witch, just tales people tell. Miss Moonshadow is normal, except for her weirdness. How could you cheat people? Harper asked. Miss Moonshadow smirked. I have a deal. Help me fool clients and I'll give you dinner and pocket money every day. Harper, no. Let's go, Claire nudged her. She's right, we can't lie to people, Winnie added. Harper was tempted by the offer of money and food. All right, we'll do it. Miss Moonshadow gave them $10 each and instructed them to meet her the next day. Present day. We never turned on the lights, so no one suspected a break-in. We slept in the basement, Harper explained. Miss Moonshadow hid her money in a secret box. We used it for food and necessities, and when we ran out, we started shoplifting," Winnie added. We've lived here for a year. John never looked for us until you two moved in, Claire said. We were happy until recently. Wait, how did you know about my ex, Alice? Josh asked, astonished. We aimed to scare you into leaving and, if that failed, steal from you and run. Becky, calm down. Let's handle this calmly, Josh said, but Rebecca was furious. She stormed upstairs, calling the girls to the living room. Give me your stepdad's contact number. I'll call him and send you back. Winnie and Claire cried, clinging to Harper. Please don't call him. We don't want to go back. We're sorry. We'll leave. Just don't call John. Seeing their distress, Rebecca softened. She put down her phone and exchanged a look with Josh. A few days later, Winnie and her sisters stood outside John's home, knocking on the door. You again? John shouted, drunk and with a young woman. 
I thought I got rid of you. I don't want you here. Go away. Hold on, mister. We came to give you this. Rebecca stepped forward, handing John adoption papers. You're adopting these brats? I never wanted them. Take them and get out. John barked. Josh and Rebecca breathed a sigh of relief. Rebecca thought, maybe this is a way to move on from our loss by bringing these girls into our lives. The couple drove home with their new daughters. You were right. We've got our Emily back threefold. Rebecca said, tears in her eyes. A few days later, they handed the property to a caretaker. After a wonderful Halloween and a trip to Disneyland, they flew back to Miami with the girls and their dog, Cookie, as one happy family.